Hello again, here is another one of my distance learning lessons. This one is on graphing the parabola y equals ax squared plus c. Enjoy it. We were looking at a quadratic function, right? And we looked at y equals ax squared. Okay, today what we're going to look at is what happens when we have the c there. The b term is going to come a bit later, okay? So we're going to forget about the b term for now. And what happens when we've got something on y equals something x squared plus something, okay? That's what today's lesson's about. And we're going to do this first example. Oh, that should be a, not b. I don't know why that's there. Example 1, there is no a, b. It's just this one question. Graph y equals negative 3 over 2 x squared plus 2. And compare it to y equals x squared. So hopefully you can draw y equals x squared quite easily now. you just got to remember the points 1, 1, 2, 4, 3, 9. Minus 1, 1, minus 2, 4, minus 3, 9. Hopefully you can do that in your, those in your head and just graph it quite quickly now. So we're going to draw it and compare it to that one. So to graph this, how am I going to do it? Uh, so y equals negative 3 over 2 x squared plus 2. So we're going to graph this. We're going to use a table like before. Let's see if we can figure out what's this c value representing. So minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. We know what the a does, right? If a, if a is positive, it opens up. If a is negative, it opens down. And if a is really big, it stretches it up. And if a is close to 0, it shrinks it down. Let's see what happens with this c value here. So I'm going to do a couple of values here, and I'll let you fill in the blanks here. Let's try x equals 2. And do the working. Don't just guess. Do the steps. Um, semester 1, we did all those PEMDAS questions, so you want to be able to use that. This, that's why we did all that for these types of questions. Minus 3 over 2, x squared, so 2 squared, plus 2 here. So doing PEMDAS... Write out your work, 3 over 2 times 4 plus 2, we do exponents first. Negative 3 over 2 times 4 is, cancel, negative 6 plus 2, which is negative 4. So we've got a point 2, negative 4. 2, negative 4, let's do that point. Might use a different color here. 2, negative 4, I'll go red today. 2, negative 4, I'm not going to write the coordinates there because they're here in my working. So there's no reason to do that. 2, negative 4. Now I'll do one more for you. How about we do x equals minus 3. y equals, so negative 3 over 2 times minus 3 squared plus 2. What's wrong with that? I'm always doing this to my class. Brackets missing there. Very important. The negative is also getting squared. One step at a time, minus 3 over 2. Negative 3 squared is plus 9, plus 2. Notice I'm not using a calculator, right? In math, we like fractions. Okay? In science, we start liking decimals more and more. But in math, we start liking fractions more and more. And what's this? Negative 3 times 9 is 18. Nothing counts. So 3 nines are 27 over 2. Plus 2. Oh, nasty. Minus 27 over 2. Plus 4 over 2. It's going to be minus... 23 over 2. And what's that? That's negative 11 and a half. Yuck. Negative 11 and a half. And plotting that point, negative 3, negative 11 and a half is down here somewhere. All over the place. All right, so that's what I get. Uh, I just erased my working because I need the board space. You should not be erasing any working. Remember, teachers like to see all your working. You should have a page filled with calculations and stuff. It'll look really cool when it's done. Go ahead, pause me and finish those off. And if you're all done, you should get these numbers and the parabola. Finish off those points and draw the parabola and it should look like that. Okay, and let's actually write the equation next to it. So y equals negative 3 over 2 x squared plus 2 in a test or a quiz. Okay, if you've got these but I don't know which one is which, I'm going to take points off. So when you, whenever you have to draw two lines or two curves or two or more of anything on a graph together, make sure you 
say which one is which you know but the person marking it's not going to know okay very important there so what does the c value mean the c value is the y intercept there it is c is two isn't it let's take a quick look at this on desmos start graphing and like i did before let's click on that spanner or the wrench whichever you like to call it step one step one and remove minor grid lines and that's nice so let's type in y equals a x squared caret symbol squared space plus c and add slider add a slider for a u c just click all and then we get this situation coming up i might start with a equals one and c equals zero so that is y equals x squared isn't it the standard problem we have so what happens when we change a that was what we did with the first lesson all right the y uh, the y intercept is always zero zero but what happens when you change the c value the c value is the y intercept in this case so if i make c one you see the parabola just shifts up and down oh. so what's changing and what's not what is not changing here what is changing is the y intercept but what is not changing is its shape. It's not changing its shape, isn't it? It's not getting fatter or thinner. So what we say here is it's a rigid transformation. It's not changing its shape. If it's non-rigid, this is like moving A, this is called a non-rigid transformation. Its shape is changing. Okay, so you can make that open down. And then the, still the same thing happens. Okay, the wine intercept changes like so. And again, I might do that trick I did last time. Now I'll make it, I'll make another point, zero comma C, and I'll label that. So that is the wine intercept, and you'll notice whenever you move C, the wine intercept is always uh, on the parabola and the y-axis there. Okay.